Welcome, everybody. We'd like to acknowledge this land that we meet on today is the traditional lands for Kaurna people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with the country. We also acknowledge the Kaurna people as the custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Kaurna people today. Welcome to you all. My name is Tony Tonkin and I'll be your host for today. Just a little housekeeping if anybody does have the need to visit the toilet. Um, they're just out the door here just to the left hand side. There are also a set of toilets through the main door here down further on the left hand side. We'll be inviting you to have drinks and nibbles at the conclusion of the book launch. Welcome to the launch of the book Recipes for Survival, Stories of Hope and Healing by Survivors of the State Care System in Australia. We are very grateful for the cooperation and support of Relationships Australia who have provided this space free of charge and have prepared the room for us today. Thank you Pamela Dawn, who happens to be with us, uh, Rachel, Rachel and Cheryl for all the work you have done for us. I'd like to commence by recognising that those who have contributed to this project and those who have experienced horrific childhoods because due to no fault of their own, they became wards of the state. They were removed from their families who the system deemed were unable to care for them. Some of these people had positive experiences living with foster parents who demonstrated the care and love expected of parents. Others' experiences were not so positive. Some of these people have been harmed by a system that failed to protect them from institutional abuse. The protection that we expect from a society which professes to value children was not the lived experience of many of the children placed in care. The people behind me and alongside me here represent this, people, this group of people. This book, through their contributions, demonstrates that they have survived and that, that, that there is a recipe to survival from which we all can learn. I invite you now to express your appreciation for these fabulous people. Before I introduce the editors of Recipes, I'd like to acknowledge Marjorie Malcolm. When one first picks this book up, we notice the wonderful needlework pictured on the front. We wish to thank Marjorie Malcolm for allowing us to use a photograph of her work for the cover and Marjorie has been kind enough to bring along the original here for us to look at today. I will now introduce to you the editors of Recipes and ask them to talk a little about the book and the part they played in making it a reality. I will then call on Jaden Harvey to officially launch Recipes then some of the contributors who are here today will talk about their contributions to this book. Thank you, Deirdre. We're still doing housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you all for coming. It's lovely to see you. such a good turnout. I'd like to start today with a quote from a British working class academic, um, Annette Kuhn. In 2002, she wrote, Perhaps for those of us who have learnt silence through shame, the hardest thing of all is to find a voice. I think she's right. When we've been shamed into silence, it's excruciatingly difficult to speak out. I still remember with some embarrassment the first time I publicly read my story about having been a foster kid. I was in my 40s by then and had gained a lot of confidence and understanding through studying at university. I had a tremendously supportive family and I chose what I knew to be a very safe place. It was still painfully challenging though to come out, partly because I didn't want to break down and cry in public. For me, crying in public is also a source of immense shame and remembered trauma because when I was a kid, my foster mother would publicly and privately berate and humiliate me whenever I cried. So I learnt to stifle my tears and I was in my early 30s before I first started to cry for all that I'd lost as a child. And sometimes now, more than 20 years on, I still saw. For those of us who have learnt silence through shame, the hardest thing of all is to find the voice. 
Erding Goffman was a Canadian sociologist who wrote on stigma back in the 1960s. One of the marginalised and stigmatised groups he mentioned was orphans. I've got no idea why children who have lost their parents through death should be stigmatised, cast out from the mainstream of life, branded with shame, and he didn't include those of us who were in state care as examples of people who were stigmatised as well. But a step Dr Joanne Penglaze, a forgotten Australian and co-founder of CLAN, has said, those of us who were in state care were orphans of the living. Through no fault of our own, we ended up in foster care, orphanages and other institutions and were branded as shameful. As children, we were already branded as shameful. The stigma of being orphans of the living was then often added to with other stigmas of poverty, mental illness, lack of education, imprisonment, low status work, disability, and I could go on and on. The state is the very worst parent of all. And it's no wonder that for those of us who have learnt silence through shame, the hardest thing of all is to find a voice. That people have been willing to contribute their stories to this collected edition means that each writer has been in their own way able to break that painful barrier of shame in order to find their voice. For some it will not be the first time they've spoken out, for others it is. At the time Priscilla and I began this project, I was working on another one with my friend and fellow, fellow theologian, Jude Noble. That book, called Women Journeying with Spirit, was an easy, easy one to put together compared to this. We had about the same number of contributors, and all of the fire, writers were fired up from the get-go. And within six months, Jude and I knew that we had a, a goer as a project. With this book, though, with Recipes for Survival, it took years to gather all of the stories together from across the nation. <coughs> Priscilla and I started in 2008, and some people had contributed very early, but when we first sat down and put those early contributions together, we had 26 pages in total. That's not a book, I said. That's a pamphlet. <laughs> Part of the difficulty in putting together this book has been, I think, that for many forgotten Australians, shame is still an insurmountable barrier, while for others, writing their story is not even a possibility because they don't have the confidence. I'm very grateful to early contributors for their extraordinary patience, but while gathering together the stories took time, editing this volume has been a pleasure and a privilege. I've always loved reading stories, and I'm quite convinced that reading stories from an early age saved my sanity, although some people might say it didn't really work. <laughs> I love to know why people end up where they are, what some of the forces are that shape their lives, and I love to bear witness to how they survive very difficult circumstances. I loved working on recipes for survival because what we have in the book are inspiring stories of extraordinary resilience. It may be that for those of us who have learnt silence through shame, the hardest thing of all is to find a voice. But we have. I'd just like to thank my family, Tony, Casey and Gemma, who are here today, and Casey's partner, Mel, um, and my daughter, Amy, who wasn't able to come today, but I'm wearing some earrings she recently gave me, so she's close, close by. The love and support of my family uh, sustains me. And I'd also like to thank my many friends and colleagues, many of whom are here today as well, um, because you inspire and encourage me as well. But most particularly, I'd like to thank all of the writers, some out the front here, but we've got other writers identifiable by their name tags in the audience, um, because without the writers and my co-conspirator, Priscilla Taylor, we wouldn't have a book. Thank you. Mm -hmm.